is the second installment of my instructional videos on handguns. Uh, if you guys missed the first video, please, by all means, go back, check it out. It's going to help you with some of my wording uh, I'm going to use. This video is going to be geared towards the beginner type shooters. So you knowledgeable gun guys might just end up pulling your hair out if you watch this. Uh, I'm going to use hypotheticals and examples that may not be technically correct. Also, terminology may be incorrect as well. Uh, and re always remember, guys, there's always more to learn, and I am not the end-all subject on this or uh, the end-all source on this. So by all means, verify your resources and uh, get out there and learn something. So an overview of this, I'm going to, uh, in this video, I'm going to be explaining what is meant by single-action handgun. Uh, first, I want to go over what a single-action revolver is. Next, I'll go over what a single-action hammer-fired gun is. And then finally, I will wrap up with a striker-fired handgun in single action only. Uh, if you guys are confused on what the single action and hammer fired is, uh, by all means go back to my first video where I, I kind of lay it out and give a general disclaimer of all the videos in the series. With that, uh, I'm also going off of kind of a notes list, so bear with me. I'm just trying to keep all the terminology straight with you guys and not get too confusing and overwhelming here. Uh, another thing is when I start referring to single action only, double action only, uh, single action, double action, in relation to the action types is what I mean is the motion of the trigger uh, and how it corresponds with the movement of the hammer or the striker. Let me say that one more time. The relationship of the motion of the trigger and how it corresponds with the hammer or the striker. So basically the jobs and how many are assigned to actually pulling that trigger. So with that, let's get into the single action revolver. And for this, I'm going to remove these other pistols and we're going to focus here on the Smith & Wesson Model 19. So for this discussion, uh, we're going to call this Smith & Wesson Model 19 a single action revolver. Uh, if we think back to watching old westerns or some of the new westerns that just came out, we always think of seeing a character riding on horseback and uh, drawing his pistol. And what comes next is pretty much a standard of the the character or the hero or the villain reaching up, manually pulling his hammer back, taking aim at whomever it is or whatever it is, and then pulling the trigger and firing the gun. To fire again, we're reaching back up here, manually cocking this hammer with our finger to the rearmost position, and then we're back to aiming and firing. In essence, with the revolver, our single action, if we think back to the definition, the single action that is assigned to the movement of the trigger is simply releasing this hammer. Once again, we've manually pulled the hammer back and the single action that we are going to accomplish by pulling the trigger is going to be releasing that hammer. Simple as that. I'm gonna switch over from the Smith & Wesson Model 19 here to a 1911 and we'll go over what a semi-automatic hammer fired pistol in single action is. Looking here at the 1911, you can see that this is a hammer fired semi-automatic handgun. Uh, Semi-automatic is another discussion, uh, and I'll get into that in another video. With the handgun unloaded and uncocked, we see that there is nothing that happens whenever we pull the trigger, as you see here. If we hy hypothetically load the handgun by pulling back on the slide, this action is going to cock our hammer, as we see here, exactly like the old western revolver the act of pulling back the hammer manually, except we use the slide to do. After the slide has been seated forward, the round in the chamber, pulling the trigger does only the single action of releasing the hammer to strike the firing pin in the back of the slide and fire the pistol. So once again, the single action of that trigger pull or pulling that trigger is going to release that hammer as seen here. So hypothetically, the, fire, the pistol would fire in the series of operation of a semi-automatic handgun would recock our hammer for us. We're not reaching back up here to recock this hammer every shot. Keeping this single action of the 1911 in mind, let's look at a striker fired single action handgun. Let's switch over to the Springfield XD. Looking at our single action striker fired handgun here, the Springfield XD. We're going to look at the striker and we're going to listen for it as well. You can tell that just like the 1911 uh, hammer fired pistol, unloaded and uncocked, we're simply going to pull the trigger. It does nothing. If we once again hypothetically load the handgun by pulling back on the slide, 
Uh, like the 1911, this action is going to cock our striker, just like the cowboy cocking his hammer, except a, our striker is internal. If you reference my first video, I go over the difference between a striker fired and a hammer fired handgun. So our striker is cocked. Again, once the slide has seated the round uh, fully forward in the chamber, pulling the trigger is only going to do the one action of releasing this striker to fire the round in the chamber. And I can show you this quite easily. So as you see, our striker has been retracted and is in the foremost position. Pulling the trigger does nothing. After the round would fire, our slide would come back and it would reload our pistol, which would then reset our striker. Or just like that cowboy cocking his hammer again, it physically cocked the hammer for us or the striker for us. So in conclusion, we talked about what is meant by a single action uh, in a hammer fired revolver, like the Smith & Wesson. The simple action of pulling our hammer back manually, pulling the trigger, which is going to give us that single action of releasing the hammer. We talked about what the single action of the hammer fired pistol is, which is the single action of pulling the trigger assigning that single action to releasing that hammer once we pull that trigger. And we also talked about the single action striker fire pistol. The motion of the trigger has the single action of releasing our striker in the rear of the pistol to fire the handgun. So I hope this helped you guys out a little bit. Look out for the next video where I'm going to discuss what a double action pistol is and the theory of operation behind it. I'm going to follow about the same guidelines as what this video did. Once again, if you guys liked what you saw or uh, you have any comments on what you saw or questions, feel free to add them below. Thanks for watching, guys.